Guys, before this episode starts, let me remind you that tomorrow, February 21st, 2014, we've got our newest Gearist giveaway. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can be in, in the know right when the contest goes live and you can win whatever that prize is. <laughs> be sure to subscribe. Hey there guys, and welcome to this episode of Gearist TV. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the Yak Tracks run from, well, from Yak Tracks. It's been a really, really long winter this year with almost the entire United States at one time or another covered in some sort of measurable snow and ice fall. And as such, a lot of runners that spend more time outside and kind of getting it done no matter the temperature have been forced inside because there's that element of bust your buttedness that they don't want to have to deal with. Now, in the past, one of the mainstays that a lot of people who like to get outside, regardless of snow and ice, have used has been yak tracks. Now, traditional yak tracks that you may be familiar with in the past mainly look like this. This in the heel and then that up again in the forefoot. And I'm covering up the secret of these in the forefoot here that we'll talk about in a second. But this is the Yak Tracks Run, and we're going to get into that. Now, traditional yak tracks, even when I've used them in the past, I use the Yak Tracks Pro. When I used them, the problem that I had was that the forefoot area would come up and flip up on top of the shoe. Basically, they weren't staying in place very well. Um, they're, they're wonderful, don't get me wrong. They're great for hikes and they're great for walking and things like that. But when you're running, particularly in deep stuff where you really can't see what's on the ground and uneven terrain like that, they are a little bit compromised when running. Again, I can vouch for them across the board when walking and hiking and things like that, they're great. But when running it just kind of, they didn't hold in place the way that I wanted them to. And up to a few years ago, that was your option. Now, Yak Tracks Sense has come out with specialty products. They've come out with the Yak Tracks Run, and they've actually also come out with the XTR, which is a little more hiking, kind of almost a mini cramp on. We're gonna be talking about this in a few weeks, but this guy is what we're gonna talk about today. We do a lot of running shoe reviews, so we figured we should throw this in there since so many of you guys are digging out from what seems to be an interminable winter that just will not stop. And I mean, what, the city of Atlanta got completely shut down somehow by two and a half inches of snow and ice. And I bet many of you were slipping and sliding all over the place. So let's get into talking about the Yak Tracks Run. First, the body of the Yak Tracks Run is built from high strength natural rubber. It really is and feels a little more dense and gives a little less stretch. In other words, you have to work harder to pull it around the foot, which is a good thing in this case than traditional Yak Tracks. Because again, slipping off the foot and kind of becoming unhinged in places is what the problem that I had with the original Yak Tracks was. Now, Yak tracks in the past, as I mentioned earlier, looked mainly like this, in the forefoot and in the rear foot. This is 1.4 millimeter coiled steel. Now it forms, it goes over kind of this double crossed skeleton here. It's kind of coiled around that. And this makes for fantastic traction in the heel and, the, and up into the arch here. What sets the Yak tracks run apart, one of the things that sets the Yak tracks, part, Yak tracks run apart for me is the forefoot. Now, the forefoot of this guy, which I'm gonna get a little closer to the camera here. The forefoot of this guy is actually separated into two plates. Now up here you can see this triangular plate and then down here what looks like an arch plate is kind of actually a triangular plate. This plate right here, these two plates have this nice flex groove. That's where your foot's gonna to want to bend. They're in a little bit forward of that. But what they've got here is they've got these carbide steel tips. Three of them here, three of them here. Now, those things provide excellent, excellent traction. And as I'm gonna show you here in the uh, Yak Tracks without the shoe in them, it's gonna flex really nicely right there. But what's cool, and again, coming out of place was one of my issues with the Yak Tracks Pro while running. On the back side here, on the underside, the shoe facing side, they're these little orange kind of dots. Now those dots don't sit directly necessarily on top of it, but they do keep the plate separated from the shoe, but they hold it in place. These are plastic that are gonna be able to kind of get into the blown rubber on the bottom of any shoe and keep them from slipping. They are on both plates. You can see down here, there are six little dots. And then up here, there are six additional little dots, which are really gonna hold those spikes in place and keep them from slipping around. Now, the Yak Tracks run is foot specific. In other words, there's a right foot, there's a left foot. And right here on the back side of the heel, you can see what it says there. This is the left Yak Track, and it also says size large. So that's how you can tell they're, they're oriented that way. You can see how it kind of 
curves over to the left a little bit. Now this is on the right foot, obviously, so it's gonna follow the shape of a general last or the mold that a shoe is gonna use in its construction. Now, as you can see here, the frame of this guy is meant to come up all the way around the shoe, all the way around the foot there. Comes up around the back, around the heel cup here. Also comes up right over top of the toe. And you can actually widget a little bit more if you wanted to. This is just what feels comfortable to me. Additionally, there is a retaining strap that you can see here. It's a hook and loop closure or Velcro um, right there that's going to be able to take up a lot of slack depending on the size of shoe. You could probably get it pretty snug if you wanted to. And since that hangs off on the lateral side, even if you had to snug it way down, you're not going to be hitting your other foot with this strap. Now, that's a little tight for my taste, um, but it fits comfortably right in there. And added bonus, these little Yaktrex icons that you can see there, and then again here on the back of the shoe, those are reflective elements to keep you safe on those shorter days. We all know that we've been up before the sun is during the winter to run, and we've also been out, or at least been caught out, when the sun has already gone down because it goes down so quickly. So having reflective elements for safety is a really important feature that I really like about this. Let's talk about the performance of the Yak Tracks Run. Now, Something interesting about this, I've worn the Yaktrax Run with shoes that have everything from a traditional rock plate that's a TPU rock plate to an EVA rock plate to variable density EVA foam in the midsole. All of these things are going to make it have a kind of different underfoot feel because it's going to shield you, shall we say, differently from the plates here, from the carbide tips. and that freaking hurt. Don't do that. So when I've worn the Yaktrax run with softer medium rock plates, in other words, an EVA rock plate or just different densities of EVA foam in the midsole, you're definitely going to feel these spike plates here, okay? It's not a huge deal. It's not something that you're going to be like, oh my god, I'm walking on spikes. No, it's not like that. What you're going to feel is you're going to feel the points underfoot, depending on how sensitive your feet are. And it's, you know, I've run in these up to about an hour and 15 minutes, not a huge deal. I, I wasn't uncomfortable. I noticed they were there, certainly. Um, but if you've got more sensitive feet, you may know it, notice it a little bit more than I did. Uh, but maybe not. You know, it's not a big deal. And it, you, it's the trade-off. You know, do you want to be running outside or do you want to be inside on the treadmill? In the rear foot, the traction is the same as it's always been. Now, being that I'm a more forefoot, midfoot runner, I'm going to land up here primarily, this doesn't come into play as much. However, when you're running on uneven terrain or trail or frozen mud or something like that, this is going to come into play because you're going to have to engage that heel a little bit more. And even when that heel settles, it's a smart idea to run pretty flat footed on ice because you want to have the whole foot. You want to create this entire foot landing. So when you land like this, you are going to be engaging that heel. Now, it's important that these really stand out, but these guys up here, one of the things that you would notice maybe in older traditional yak tracks is that the coil there, when you're running, it kind of gets shifted, okay? It kind of moves and not just, I'm not talking about the product shifting around on the shoe, I'm just saying it kind of moves underfoot. These spikes dig into the ice and really, really grab it. I liked that a lot. The yak tracks run is rated down to about minus 40 degrees. Now, that's Fahrenheit. Now, what's important about that is that at about minus 40, the ice is going to become super, super hard. And while you could probably wear them below minus 40, they're not going to be able to grip as well. And I think that's the reasoning behind the magic number of minus 40 degrees. If you're a runner at all, particularly somebody who lives in a cold weather state, and I'm not talking about Florida, if you live in Tampa, you probably don't need these guys. But if you're a runner at all in a moderately, you know, a state with seasons, this is a great thing to have, even if you don't get a lot of ice. I mean, pre people in Atlanta probably never thought they would need these, but guess what? You did a couple times this winter. And here's the deal, guys. It's $40 for Yak Tracks Run, $40, and they're going to last more than one season. So get a pair. It's kind of almost a no-brainer. I mean, you should have these regardless. What if you go someplace where it's cold and you still don't want to hit the hotel treadmill or something like that? You want to be outside running and you want to enjoy the outside. It really is fun running in snow and ice, but not if you keep hitting your butt with the ground in the snow and ice. $40 for the Yak Tracks Run. Get your hands on some. Check them out. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of Gearist TV. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click the likes and the thumbs up and the favorites and all that stuff. We love to hear from you guys, so definitely leave questions or comments in the comments section below. Also, click on over to Gearist.com, and while you're there, take a look around at all of our other reviews. I think you'll like them. And if you have any questions or comments there, please feel free to send an email to info at Gearist.com. 
Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next time. Hey there, everyone, and thanks so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. Please click on that wonderful, beautiful blue subscribe button right there. Also, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the questions and comments section below. And don't forget to visit Gears.com. We'll talk to you next time.